Okay, uh, call to order the uh, Public Service Committee meeting of the Gardner City Council for uh, Thursday, January 13th at 3.30 p.m. Uh, the record should reflect that all members of the uh, committee are present, uh, Chair Walsh, uh, Councilor Jerlowitz, and Councilor Tyros. Uh, is anybody recording the meeting other than uh, DPW staff? On that. First order of business is a review and approval of minutes of the prior meetings dated uh, September 9th, 2021 and September 21st, 2021. I want to state for the record that each of the, the, the current members of the Public Service Committee were not members of the Service Committee and were not in attendance at the meetings of September 9th and September 21st. However, thanks to the uh, Staff here at DPW, there were rec uh, audio recordings made of uh, those two meetings, and uh, copies of those audio recordings have been provided to all mem current members of the service committee. And each of us uh, indicates that uh, we have listened to those audio recordings, so we are in a position to uh, act on the minutes uh, uh, that uh, were prepared, presented. And is there a motion on the floor? I'll move we waive the reading in the minutes and approve uh, that as presented for the September 9th and September 21st Public Service Committee meeting. Second. Motion made and seconded uh, to uh, dispense with the reading of the minutes and approval is presented. Is there a discussion? Not all those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes 3 0. The, uh, the next item on the agenda is department uh, updates. Uh, First of all, we have uh, Public Works, Water and Sewer for uh, Director Arnold. Can I make a recommendation that we uh, see the abatements, the people who are in for the abatements? Sure. Can we get them in and out and maybe the yeah. National Grid? I think that makes perfect sense. First, uh, let's move on to abate the abatements then. The first is uh, the uh, Abatement of uh, water and sewer uh, charges for uh, eight, 81 Century Way. Uh, the, uh, the request for abatement was submitted uh, uh, and by correspondence dated September 14, 2021, the uh, responsible uh, party for that uh, uh, billing, uh, Ms. Belmonte, was uh, notified that the, the the appeal or the request for abatement was denied, and, uh, and, and the uh, account holder took an appeal to the Public Service Committee, and that is what's here today. Hello. Hello. Are you, are you Ms. Balbonte? I am. Well, welcome to the Public Service Committee meeting. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, what would you like to tell us? Um, I had gotten, I believe it was in September, a large water bill, which is unlike my usual water bill. Um, and I had sent a notice about it. I had gone away between June 1st and June 25th, and I came back to a broken toilet that was running constantly, which I was gone, so I, I didn't know about it. I fixed it once I came back, but even just that four days, it jacked up my water bill. I see. About 300 bucks. And, um, and this was uh, a problem with uh, just the toilet? Uh, yeah, the flapper was broken, flapper so it was, was broken. running yeah. constantly. I replaced three of them in my house just last week. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just had a half an hour, I was going on. Couldn't have half an hour, any other thing. 
So if, if you, I, so the the water was uh, was metered because it was in your in your uh, uh, is it a an apartment? No, it's not an apartment. It's a condo. condominium. Um, and tell us why you think the city should reduce that in some way since the water came from your uh, it was metered it properly metered to your account. I was wondering if there's any way I could get some discount or something like that. I know I have to be responsible for some of it because it was my place, my condo, but it was out of, completely out of my control that it was that high. Yeah, and, but you'd acknowledge that it wasn't the responsibility of the city, uh, not something the city did that was responsible for that. No, it was nothing the city okay. did. It was something that just one of those things that happened that was out of my control. It wasn't city's fault. It, I mean, yeah. Uh, it hadn't been leaking at all prior to when you uh, left. No. Yeah. We had replaced the handle to the toilet um, like a week or so earlier, and it was fine. I think it had something to do with that because we had to readjust that too. Why was it that you replaced the, uh, the, the lever? Uh, yeah. It actually broke off. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? I don't have any further questions, no. Uh, no, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank um, I don't think there's a basis upon which to abate the, uh, the, the bill, but I suggest that we consider offering a plan, six months, say, for payment of the, uh, of, of the bill so that uh, it, doesn't, it isn't a hit all at the same time. I actually got the bill repeatedly but for like four hundred and sixteen dollars I believe it was. For sixteen sixty two I think. Yeah. And um, And you paid it, it appears. I already paid it because I got three or four bills and I didn't know when the appeals process was coming out. So I, I didn't want to well, leave I, uh, anyone we, hanging. We appreciate the fact that uh, it was paid. Is there a way to divide this up uh, this amount up and give her credit to, for six equal payments over the next six months, or the next six bills? Well, it's, it's so six months, excuse me. But she paid the bill already. And I understand, but we could give her a credit. Okay. Um, or can we? I'm, I'm asking that question. We don't know. Yeah, we don't. I don't know how we could do it. Like, in the system itself, I don't know how we could offer a credit. Yeah, you can take that value over six. Credit, if I understand correctly. Yeah, that, that's what I, that's my thought uh, on it. Just to make it a little easier. Yeah, we can look. We can look into that. And just okay. apply apply the credit over the next three bills, but still send her. I think I know what it's saying. Like a bill. Yes. You do. I mean, I you know know divide four sixteen sixty two by yep. by three by three, and uh, give her credit towards the amount that's due in the next bill for that that amount. Okay, what do we do with the what do we do with the deduct? So are we are we crediting her entire account of four hundred dollars or how is So in other words, are we giving her an abatement? No, exactly. no abatement, it's just a payment plan. But she she's paid. already paid the paid the amount. Yep. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna give it back to her and then have her pay it back, right? Well I, it's I understand what you're trying to do, but I'm not sure how it uh, I'm not Well the thing is that, it, that it's been paid. Yeah. So that means this may not work. Yeah. Because there really isn't a basis in, uh, under the facts of the case, in my view, uh, that um, they're, you know, for a refunding or. But I, I didn't realize that you had already paid it. So. Yeah, I kept getting repeated bills, and I was afraid it was going to be reported to bill collectors no, because understandably. Yeah. I didn't want it to get that far. Plus, I didn't want to hold you guys up with money that, you know. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the fact that you paid it, but unfortunately, at least in my view, um, I don't think that there's a, a factual or legal basis upon which to grant an abatement. There wasn't any late charges or anything like, like that charged to her. Uh, no, she paid it within a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Interest or anything like that. Yeah. Unfortunately, the water passed through the sewer system, so you know, yeah. a little bit there. Well, uh, based on the, the tenor of uh, the committee seems to be that uh, uh, the, the appeal should be denied. And I didn't get a motion to that effect, but that's your pleasure. So, uh, uh, I
discussion on the motion to deny the appeal. If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Regrettably, we have to deny your appeal, but I appreciate the fact that you paid it on a timely basis. Not everybody does. And, uh, and uh, hopefully the flappers will last a long time for you. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming. And, uh, okay. Well, thank you for having me. Okay. Sorry I had to be punished for paying my bill. <laughs> no, no, not, no. It, would have been, it would have to have been paid. It was just we would have given you some time, I think, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, thank you, guys. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Have a appreciate good day. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that is the uh, appeal of Cara Belmonte, uh, property address to 61 Century, Century Way, B-16, U-1. 19 Myrtle Road. City Council, uh, which is considering your the appeal of uh, your request for abatement of a water and sewer bill that you incurred uh, last year. Correct. And uh, what would you like to tell us about? It? Well, during the time that I received that bill, um, my one and only bathroom in my house was being completely gutted and redone. I had a porta potty in my driveway um, for quite a bit of time. We were showering at relatives' houses. We were using the bathroom, either the porta potty or relatives' houses. Um, so I, when I got the water bill, as you can imagine, I was quite surprised. Um, I've been at my residence for over 10 years now. My water bills have been steady every quarter. Every quarter they've been steady, and every quarter we pay them on time. Um, so again, I was quite shocked when I saw the bill. I called immediately. Um, a couple of uh, city employees had come out. They checked my meter, found my meter to be okay, which surprised me a little bit also, um, but after I had given my initial statement, I found out after the fact that the people that were working on my bathroom were using my outside spigot to do whatever they were doing, clean their wheelbarrow, clean their trowels, um, and also um, at that same time, I had ripped up the concrete walkway in front of my house and planted grass. That was the only thing that I did differently from any other quarter for the entire time I've been at the residence. Um, so I guess I'm not trying to abate the water usage. I'm trying to abate the sewer because the water was, I found it afterwards, was used outside. So it didn't go through the sewer. It was, went to the ground. The, um, have you paid the water uh, bill? I was told not to. Who goes to that? Somebody from the city office. I was told to wait until my appeal. Is that the practice? Uh, it's typically what we do to appeal. It's, uh, we, we lock the interest so it's not collecting interest. Um, if it's a high, if it's a giant bill, we typically tell them not to pay it until uh, it's been appealed. Yeah, it was a $900 water bill. Usually I pay about two and change. Well, for that bill, the uh, water charge was 463.24 and the sewer charge was 370. And I was hoping to get the sewer charge to be more aligned with what I pay quarterly. Because since and since then, I've received my next water bill, and it was back to what it normally is. What was the sewer charge during the most recent one? Right. Eighty-five dollars. And this most recent one has been paid. So the only outstanding balance I have is from this this one. Okay. 
I can understand the, did, did you talk to the contractor about this? I did, and they're the ones that told me that they were using my hose outside. Because it was blowing my mind that I had this bill and couldn't figure out why. Mm -hmm. Meter was working fine. I had no bathroom. You know, like I said, we were showering at relatives' house. My wife wasn't even living at the house for a month mm -hmm. because she just she couldn't handle using the porta potty at night. They do, they do a good job. Yeah, they did a great job. Okay, good. Yeah, the bathroom looks amazing. That's good. Questions? Um, it does seem yeah, there's a lot of water uses up there. There must have been cleaning a lot of a lot of items up there. But it does make sense. Your fill is very consistent going back. I don't know if I have any questions. You're pretty thorough in your explanation, sir, so I appreciate that. Um, uh, just one question. You had said you were surprised the meter was working fine. Any reason for that? Or? No, I was just surprised that my bill was that high. And okay. We couldn't figure out why. Gotcha. I figured there was something going so on. So you didn't realize about the contractor until after you submitted Correct. your original uh, request? Correct. I, I understand. Yes. Yeah. And at that point, I went back to them and I said, is there anything that you guys were doing that could have caused this? And that's when they came back and said, yes, they were using my hose. So like I said, the only thing I was doing differently was I had ripped up that strip of concrete because for whatever reason, the walkways in my house, they, none of them go all the way to the road. They stop about four feet short. So it was an eyesore, tore it up, planted grass. Um, so you said you planted some grass? Yes. You know, when you, and you watered it, I assume. Correct. Yeah. And for over what period of time? The same period of time. Because during this time, we spent a lot of money last year. We ripped up that walkway, planted grass, had our house resided, and we did the bathroom. How many square feet of grass did you It's whatever a strip of grass, whatever that concrete walkway was. My, my front, I mean, I have pictures. My frontage isn't very big. Okay. And like I said, I'm not disputing the water usage. It's the sewer. Yeah. Well, it, it may be that your uh, your water usage is a little higher because of the watering of the grass, too. It could be. Yeah. Yep. But I, it, it shouldn't be 4X. That's why, that's what was blowing my mind. Well, the your most recent sewer charge was $85. Charge. charge uh, uh, that's in dispute here is um, $370. Correct. Um, I'm inclined to think about, uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? My thoughts are roughly the $85 charge that and subtract that out of the 270 so off. Well, I, I was thinking that there, there was some consideration for the fact that there was water usage for the, you know, for the the lawn. The lawn. There was, a, I, guess, I guess, my thought was just to be, it was negligible. He had to put his diamond to come down in here and it didn't go through the sewer either um, at that point. So um, you reduce it by? His most, most recent charge would be my, um, my, my commission. No, not by the most recent charge, but the, the charge of that amount. amount. The difference. The difference. So, so it would be reduced by 285, would be? I think roughly, yeah, right. So is there a motion to uh, abate the uh, sewer charge uh, in dispute uh, by $285? So moved. Second. Is there further discussion? Uh, uh, no, I'd say you're saying that the water lawn section probably smaller than this table, or about the same? It's narrower, probably about, maybe a little bit longer, but that's okay. about it. It's not, no, no, it's not, it wasn't very Not a whole lawn. No. Yeah. Is, there, is there lawn uh, on the other, other two sides? Yeah, there's grass on both sides, but I was only watering that as well. No, just that one strip. Okay. Yeah, at the time I lived in the house, I, I'm not one of those people that tries to have the, the best lawn in the neighborhood. <laughs> I just use whatever Mother Nature gives me. I understand right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. So the motion on the floor is to abate the sewer charge associated with this uh, account or with this bill mm -hmm. by two hundred eighty-five dollars. Uh, is there any further discussion? Not all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Keep an eye on those contractors. Next time. <laughs> Hopefully, I've done for a little while. <laughs> we have the, uh, we're going to take the poll uh, location yeah. next. Roller ride is not, not coming at all. Yeah, right. We do that. Okay. We're going to do that the next meeting. Chairman Walsh, do you want to uh, vote?
we can take a vote. We, we, uh, for the record, uh, we had on our agenda a, um, an appeal uh, for was it Robillard Street yeah, number, Robillard, yeah, 10. number 10 oh, Robillard. Uh, the uh, account holder indicated that uh, she was not able to uh, uh, attend tonight. Uh, this afternoon's meeting and requested that it go on onto our agenda for the next. So I think. Uh, we are receptive to that. Is there a motion to place it on the agenda for the next meeting? So moved. Second. So all those in favor? Aye. Motion passed. I'd just like to introduce uh, Neil Miner, who. Um, you signed all the letters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was me. You. Nice to meet you, Neil. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Actually, I'm all you in. COVID. Could it be COVID compliant? So it's nice to meet you. You go. Same. Thank you for the go. And, uh, Thank you for coming. Commuting? No, I don't know. Yeah, also <laughs> wanted to introduce John. He's uh, the new GIS coordinator. Started last year, but figure be nice to put a face to yeah. the job. Yeah. So, face. curious to know what are the um, what are the projects uh, other than maintenance? Uh, we have we the only new things we've started are we are GPS locating the water that's gone in new from the last couple of years, which we had never done before. So we have equipment to actually physically pick up where it is. So we're separating a old and new GPS versus non GPS. Just, uh, it's supposed to old maps. plans that we just yeah. lay on. So that, that's a new thing. And when we started a like, community projects map for that didn't exist before, like an ongoing. This is what we're doing in the city. Um, the mayor mostly has input on that, but uh, sure. there's only new things. Mostly, otherwise, it's just uh, updates to the municipal data. Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind. So no new, uh, no new additions to GIS other than these things that you mentioned. Um, I mean, not really. There's there's technology updates, but no new yeah. features. No new features that really we're using right now other than GPS. Okay. Keeping track of all the employees, you have, you have those Apple uh, IDs. And <laughs> we have the capability to do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, watching that, them travel around the city. That's another, yeah, I mean, we're, we are upgrading their, their equipment too to, to that stuff uh, to use with the, G, the GPS. So that will go over well. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, in any event, why don't we, uh, well, nice to meet you. You too. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Good to meet you. Uh, why don't we go to the uh, whole location uh, item out of order? Petition by National Grid to install one single load pole on Church Street beginning at a point approximately 255 feet west of the center line of the intersection of Marquette and Church Streets and continuing approximately 20 feet in the north lo location install 40 feet C2 pole 9 to provide power to 116 Church Street. Yep, that's correct. Uh, my name is Harvey Morales and I'm representing National Grid. Thank you for coming, Harvey. Yeah. I appreciate that this hasn't been the practice to have somebody from National Grid at our oh, public service meeting. We had a survey requested uh, so that if there are questions that councilors have uh, when the matter comes up for a vote, to we're in a position to respond. Oh, no, that's great. You know, we had a survey of customers, so anything you need, we that's can apply. Great. I appreciate it. Well, can you tell us about this one? Uh, well, apparently it's for a housing complex that's at this location where they've been having some reliability issues. Uh, so a request was so put in. Is high rise? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There was a request put in to uh, put in a new service to address these uh, reliability issues. So, so this, this new. Excuse go me. ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, this new pole would be the new riser pole, for um, to feed into a new underground cable to a new pad mounted transformer, mm -hmm. which would then solve all of their uh, uh, outages that they've been having at that location. Um, are there? Poles that will be taken out of service. Yes, there's actually across the street uh, the old pole location. Um, we would abandon that, mm -hmm. and uh, the new pole location will be directly across the street in this new spot. Is there? Uh, this is something that goes back a long way from. I've been on the city council since yeah. 1981, so I, 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 there used to be a problem with removal of poles that weren't being used. The, the dual pole locations or or poles that were abandoned, as you call them. Yeah. The, uh, what's the practice about removing a pole that's been abandoned? So uh, the practice is, um, since those days, we've done a lot to address that issue. We have a new system called uh, PLM, um, which is a tracker that's used by all the uh, utility companies. Mm -hmm. And as each utility company 
uh, disattaches from the pole, they're required to update this program, which then lets the next adjoining utility know that it's their turn to disattach from the pole. The responsibility is the owner of the pole, I assume. Uh, there is, everybody's an owner on the pole. Everybody that attaches to the pole owns a piece of the pole. No, that didn't used to be the case. <clears throat> well, there's one company that handles <clears throat> the installation and removal of the butt of the pole, as well as the whole pole, but mm -hmm. each company owns their small section, so they're required to cut off their piece of the section as they disattach from the pole. So the way it works is it goes from the top down. We're at the top portion of the pole, and then it's a neutral space, then it's any municipal attachments, then it's cable TV, and then telephone at the bottom of the pole. Mm -hmm. So when the new pole gets put in, we'll transfer our stuff first. We'll, set, we'll, we'll uh, send a notification through PLM, and then Verizon is notified. No, the municipal attachments are notified. Yeah, they typically come to me yeah. if we have a street light up. We have to get that right. off. Then after we do that, then it's yeah. Verizon who's next. Yeah, then so yeah. on and so forth. All yeah. the way down. And who's responsible for removal? Uh, right now, um, I think it's split up. So we recently made a new contract with Verizon. I'll, I can get you a solid answer tomorrow. And, and the reason I ask this yeah. question is that there are you, the reason we used to have a problem, or part of the reason we used to have a problem with getting old poles removed is because there was a dispute about who was responsible for it. Oh, and, okay. And it would go years and years and years with yeah. blue pole locations, one of which only one of which is being utilized. Or so we have addressed that issue as well them. recently. We have a new contract with Verizon where we're responsible for all the poles now. Okay. Yeah. Good. And what's the time frame usually for, I for don't completing know that. that process? I'm not really sure. I'm not okay. involved with that process. Okay. But I Very good. A, I can check. If you need a solid answer, I can get you on the No, no. I'm yeah. just the topic. It's well, always been something on my mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. And uh, so I just wanted an update. Because I appreciate the questions. Years Thank since, you. Uh, I sat in this committee. Yep. Um, uh, I have no other questions about uh, the poll location uh, for this one. Uh, no, I, I hope those uh, averages and reliability issues get solved. Thank you. Please, Any idea what the time frame is on getting, the, getting it done, getting it transferred over at all? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm not just curious. Other than that, no. Well, presumably, it's it's in the, the the fact that this was requested assumes that, that there's some plan for for implementing the, the. Yeah, we have a regular scheduling process. So the next um, le, le, uh, requirement that we have to get uh, is um, next Wednesday, Tuesday at the, the public meeting. hearing. Yeah. Um, after that, I'm not really sure if there are any other requirements like billing or ease. Um, I'm not familiar, okay. but we do have a scheduling process, and so once all of our requirements are approved, mm -hmm. we have a program that tracks them, and it goes directly to once. So uh, it's in levels of ten, and once we hit the fifth level, it automatically goes to our scheduling group, and our line department is scheduling usually on full on a full week basis. They, you know, barring any emergencies, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Uh, storms, things of that nature. Well, if there's a if there's a way when the public hearing comes up next Tuesday, if there's a uh, you'll be at, uh, you or somebody who comes will be asked to you know explain what the purpose of it is in the public hearing, if it's possible to have a time frame uh, estimated time for completing getting yeah. that job, part that job done, yeah. it could be included. In, right. uh, in that yeah, that would involve I think someone from the DPW. I'm not sure, but normally. Uh, when customers ask for an upgrade, um, our policy for underground is the customers are required to provide the trenching and the installation of all the. Oh, dogs. so this is underground. Uh, part of it's underground. I, I see. So the pole would be the first part of the, the the installation, and then from there the plan is to put in a new underground system to replace the one that's failing now, which would right. then increase the reliability of. Well, it. I, the only thing I'm talking about is when do you when is it that you expect the pole to be installed? Oh, that part, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure, but I could find well, out. If you find out for the public hearing, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, is there a motion to recommend? So moved. Yeah. Second. Motion is to recommend uh, approval of the petition. Is there any discussion on the motion? Not all those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes.
Okay, thank you, sir. Very great. Now, thanks for the invitation today. Okay, if you need any further uh, help from National Grid, just please feel free to always invite us. Okay. We're always here to help our customers and answer questions. Sure. Yeah. You're, you're, thank you. You're a good salesman. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <thanks>. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. coming. Thanks. Updates. Okay. Um, I'd like to start off with new members. I can hand out a little packet. Sharing for going with some of the things we do down here, but some of the things we might surprise you. Um, thank you. Not that we're going to go through every single page. Um, but one is an update as far as kind of an outline as far as like what we do um, in the, all the contacts, the hours we work, uh, the different divisions that we have on here. Um, just kind of gives you who's here in the, in the packet as far as who works for us and how to contact us and whatnot. So if you just kind of look through it, you know, not today, but you'll give you a second, it just kind of might answer some of your questions as far as you might have or uh, and gives you some information about the DPW, the different divisions that we have, and it also has some things about the engineering department and the GIS. Um, just descriptions of like our parks and playgrounds and home cemeteries and whatnot. Yeah, dams we own on the engineering side. Just sort of a 30,000 foot view of some of the things. Great. Okay. Just some, some good reading. <laughs> uh, more importantly, which probably more interested in is, um, is the paving. Um, as you know, we're in charge of all the city's paving. Uh, we did a lot last year and we did almost eight miles of paving last year. A lot of it was out of the water projects that we did. Um, we have more to do out of the water projects that we did. And uh, in, in general, we get about $700,000 from the state uh, out of Chapter 90 funds that we try to put most, if not all, to paving. And then the city allocates every year at least $150,000, which they've been doing for the last maybe 10 years. Uh, and then as money is available, they might appropriate 300 or even 500,000 like what we got just a few months ago. Um, yeah, usually for free cash sometimes there's an uh, allocation depending upon what other uses the mayor decides that are priorities, higher priorities. And you know, how are streets picked every year? I send the mayor, um, $2 million worth of paving roads as far as like how, you know, as far as priority, as far as what I see, what I hear from the general public and just driving around. He may have ideas, counselors. Um, so we put it on a list, come up with an estimate. We have a quarter amount of money to fund what we sh really should. Um, so then we pick and choose. It's the mayor's ultimate decision as far as what paving, what streets we pave. Um, this list here that you have, uh, we took a ride around every section of the city uh, we rated the condition of the street um, based on you know potholes and whatnot, and then we prioritize them based on is it a is it a main route is it you know is it Main Street or is it Myrtle yeah Ashley Drive or something it's just we try to take a look at you know try to prioritize based on that or if it's a route to the hospital or a school it obviously gets a little bit more priority so you'll kind of see how things were rated and prioritized um, look across and there's a total which is a rough total, I mean, that's not, it's, if I put in a rough top cost, and then if that street is chosen for final paving, for the final paving list, we go up yeah, for the real price. hard numbers. So just generally that's what we kind of stick up, sticking in there. So don't hold me to that number. <laughs> so that's kind of paving, that's how, if there's any questions on. Um, is there, uh, the, these are streets and I know, uh, there's a lot more priority than we have funds to pave, but um, I'm wondering, the, the mayor indicated to me re, uh, not too long ago that there was also a plan to put together a prior list for sidewalks. Yes, and that's something, when the snow clears, we're going to go out and rate and prior, uh, prior, put priority to the sidewalks. Okay, so, so there's a plan to put that together, and that's also yeah. Chapter 90 type money. Yeah, you can use that. Yeah. So that, that's, it's not on here, and then once we do that, We'll come up with a separate list and somehow try to maybe commingle it with the paving. Yeah. Because it's just so easy. It's hard to do a sidewalk and not a street because of the elevation changes and stuff. So it's as we go. If you notice, we're trying to pave streets and also do the sidewalks along alongside. Like I'm going to use rural lot area. Uh, we just put in the water main down <coughs> there. In that whole area, we're probably doing 50% of the 
of the roads with new mains. So the other roads, we're going to have to use city funds to do. And I also got to need city funds to do the sidewalks. So I'd like to do, you know, put together kind of a comprehensive yeah. plan. Though. And one of the things we're doing is we're taking this information and then the sidewalk information later this spring, put it into JS. It's pretty easy to visualize red for a bad street, red for bad sidewalks, and see where those two lists cross. And that just helps prioritize a little easier. Yeah, and, and you know, there's various priorities, various types of priorities of the people. Yeah. People are walking more these are, days yep. than ever before. Uh, there's kids walking to and from school. There's new school being added. Uh, there's a variety of factors that go into the use of sidewalks, and uh, it's kind of a little pet project of mine. Yeah. There's um, grants available for like safe routes to school. Um, one of the projects that's on the list right now is in front of the Elm Street. Uh, I'm going to say more or less from Lawrence up to... Just all the way to the Rotary. Is it all the way to the Rotary? Okay. Um, as far as like redoing the section with walks You mean in. the school that's going to be uh, no longer used? Yeah. Well, maybe that can be re relocated. The design plan's are already done. This is something... Well, the that they've been paused as of maybe a month ago or yeah. so right now with the change in school. Well, if that makes sense to, you know, to prioritize the school that is going to be used. Yeah. So that, that one's in limbo right now. But there are ways that could go to use. other uh, schools. Um, well, okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, not okay. I mean, I have a question. They'll try to go down through. Um, as far as water projects go, um, I'm just going to openly say anytime you guys want to take a, a, a trip, um, whether we do it as a committee or if you want individually when you get some time, it'll probably take about an hour and a half. I can go at least show you the facilities so you see what Crystal Lake is, St. Vaughan Wastewater Plant, and just so you have a feel as far as like what the facilities The wastewater one's the best. Yeah. Save that for the end. Or the sludge plant. <laughs> <Funny, laughs> funny, <story, laughs> yeah. funny story about that. Half, half the eighth grade, when I was in eighth grade, went to the Newport Mansions. And my father's half, which I was in, went to the wastewater treatment. Oh, <laughs> that's a bad draw. Yeah. Got, and we got the walk because we got the junior high. But, sorry, Dan. No, no problem. Um, as far as projects go, uh, currently we're probably 75% uh, done, 80% done with the uh, phase two of the water project, which was, uh, that's the Rivoli yellow truck you see in town. Um, all the main lines are in. They just got to come back and they got to do some of the service connections and some of the tie-ins to the mains to, to complete everything. Um, That's uh, in the spring, I assume? Yeah, yeah, probably March, April, you'll see them coming mm -hmm. in. Uh, there's about, there was an 11, originally it was an $11 million loan on that. There's about $800,000 left um, that I'm going to be putting into trying to pave at least what a lot of what we've disturbed. Um, but I am probably going to have to go in front of council again and ask for additional funds to at least maybe do Pearl Street and some of the other streets that just didn't have enough money in it to the roads as far as well there were additions to the project along the way were they not yes yeah. yes the, we got the contractor it was a pretty decent price so what we did is we did a change order and added um, a substantial amount of water mains at least to get the old hundred year old water yeah. mains done. west street was never on it half of that robotard neighborhood was added yep. so, quite a bit. And as i understand it, the reason that it's less expensive to do a change order as opposed to a new contract that might get bid is that they're already set up here, and uh, correct. Uh, just yeah. the, the staging of it for everything is already in place. Yeah, no mobilization, upfront no, charges, no design costs. We saved yeah. two hundred thousand dollars in design costs because we would have, if we had to do it, we would have had to come up with design and set it out. So yeah. how was how was the that part of it uh, handled? Located the existing structures, and the foreman and the owner of the company basically went out, marked where they were going to put it to avoid it. And install the water main, so it totally avoided the design. The design. Yeah. So it saved a yeah. ton of money. Yeah. Good. Um, we're gonna have to uh, in, uh, replace some of our. Well, we're gonna have to replace all of our water meters. Uh, the last time they were done was between 1999 and 2002, so they're 20 years old. Um, that's probably like a million and a half to two million dollar project. Um, the elevated storage tank got at 140. Uh, we just recently painted the exterior of it, but the interior of that tank was built in 88, 86? Yes, give or take a year. Um, what happens is there's water in it, 
and over the winter it freezes, it forms a nice thing and it goes up and down and it just eventually wears on the interior of the tank. We're gonna have to drain it somehow, <laughs> pressurize the high system, and Stuck it. get in there and clean it and yeah. coat it. So we're working on a plan on how how to keep the system pressurized. More or less a, a, a temporary elevated tank, yeah. or you know, pressurized tank. Oh. Oh, that's, it's interesting, um, but that's a project that's on the horizon. Um, up on the reservoir hill, there are two two million gallon concrete tanks which have been um, recoated and whatnot, epoxied in the last few years. But next to it is a pump station. It's a water pump station, which pumps the water from those tanks um, out to the elevated storage tank on 140. That tank, that pump station fills that tank. Uh, that's probably 30 plus years old, and it's going to have to be rehabbed. It's had its useful life, uh, so we're going to have to dump some money into that, which could be, again, everything's big ticket, million to two million dollars, I'm gonna have to on that. So I just wanna give you a kind of a feel of what's coming up. Um, you might have heard, we had water break back over in the summer. Um, just it was a compounding, um, it was a bunch of things that went wrong all at once as far as the uh, gate valves not being able to close, and we couldn't isolate the system. Um, so there's a transmission line that runs from Crystal Lake down on the Crystal Lake Reservoir. And there's a line that goes right up Haywood Street and it actually goes up through the woods um, to James Street and feeds the elevated storage tanks. The, there's sections of that tank, uh, that line that are 1880s, 18, 1893. Um, there, are, there is another line for redundancy, which is 1970 vintage. Um, we're looking at replacing the old transmission line, which that is in the design process. Um, that's probably about a million and a half dollar job that's coming up. And then we assumed that at some point we're gonna be getting a, um, an infrastructure bill that's gonna be hopefully some free money coming or at least uh, low interest. Um, so we're in the process of designing 30,000 feet of water mains um, in the city that we can kind of put on the shelf and if we get infrastructure money, we can put the design and hopefully have shovel ready projects for that. And that's probably $12 million I think they estimated um, so that's, these are some of the water projects we've got going on. Uh, at the wastewater plant, uh, we've, we've took out a $14 million loan, was it 10 years, 10 20, years ago? Maybe? 2014, I think. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, cause we had to, we were under more or less, not quite a consent order, but DEP was telling us it's coming soon if we don't do something. Um, so we upgraded the headworks of the wastewater plant, which is more or less the the mouth of the wastewater plant, um, the receiving waters. We spent a couple million bucks on that. And then we just finished uh, the end of the plant, the dewatering part portion of it. Um, and we came in actually under budget. Proud it was, uh, we ended up spending about 11 and a half million bucks on that instead of the 14. Um, that loan's canceled, it's over and done with. But at some point, we're gonna have to do some concrete work down there because the tanks are from the vintage 80s, 1980s, so they're gonna have to drain them, recode them, all the metal uh, mechanisms are gonna have to be replaced and whatnot. So that's probably another five million bucks that we're looking at again down the road. And lastly, as far as the sewer projects go, is the sludge landfill, not everyone's favorite topic. Um, we probably have two to four years left in the sludge landfill as far as um, room. So after it leaves the wastewater treatment plant, uh, it goes through dewatering, it's put on a dump truck and it's hauled up to the uh, sludge landfill, which is up off of West Street. Um, we're looking at expanding that. We've done studies, we've looked at hauling out of town, we've looked at anaerobic digesters, we've looked at uh, compost, we've looked at... Um, yeah, different styles of dewatering. How to, more or less, how to get rid of our sludge. And it's the most cost-effective way, so we are look, we're in the process of designing and expanding that landfill. Um, and that's hopefully gonna buy us about 17 years once it's constructed. So we're gonna probably in 2024 be looking at constructing the sludge landfill, which will then gain the city 17 years for um, storage of our sludge. Yeah, so I mean, the, the area that it's under consideration for the expansion is one that was identified as a location for that and approved it, at least on a preliminary basis by DEP Decades ago, yes. I understand. Yes. It approved the landfill site from the 80s. It was, it was approved. Uh, but you still have to go through all the regulatory process, oh, sure. even though it was sure. Sure. approved. 
and it's not a separate landfill. It's, it's literally expansion, expansion right off the end of it. So, so that's water sewer. Um, a couple of updates. Uh, Pearson Boulevard is a mess. We know from more or less from um, Williams Restaurant up to the Rotary. That's been a tip project trying to get on with the state for since 19 since 2011, I believe we took money out for uh, designs design like that. It's uh, it's on the tip list and hopefully we're gonna get done this summer. Uh, at least Can you explain the tip list. Yeah. Tip list is uh, more or less it's a, a money that the state has and they allocate to the city that they pay for the construction. Uh, so, but the city is is responsible for the design. So we'll pay for the design of a project and submit it to the state preliminary saying does this meet their qualifications. Uh, if it does, you know, we give them like 25% design plans. It eventually gets onto a to a list of the state, it's allocated money, and then um, when everything's said and done, once the project's approved and ready to go by the state, they come in and they handle full construction. Um, and the city doesn't have to pay for any of that. But we do have to pay for the upfront design. Yeah, so you, you, you pay for a project design, then you jockey for location, and usually you can get one every five years or so out of them, so you got to try to pick the one you want the most. Uh, one of my projects, the Uptown Rotary, is probably competing for a construction date with Pearson Boulevard right now. We're looking at December 2022, we're going out for advertisement with construction in the following spring. Up there at Central Green now. Uh, another tip project is Route 140. Um, we actually own, the city owns a section of 140 from Green Street up to Winchenden. It's a 1.33 mile uh, section of 140 that uh, we were lucky enough maybe 15 years ago to at least get them to take over plowing and sanding operations. Uh, but we're still on the hook for a line painting and catch basin repair and paving and whatnot. Um, so that's on the docket again to get done this year um, to be repaid by the state, and that's a, probably a $4 million job that they're gonna, they're gonna pay. Whereas Pearson Boulevard is like 1.2 million, to give you an idea of what. Yeah, and while you're on that topic, there's, there's, there's also the bridge that. Uh, that's the rail trail bridge. Yeah. Um, so that same tip list uh, through the state, uh, we have 3.1 year mark for a pedestrian bridge from the uh, National Grid rail trail on the, western side to the paved uh, rail trail on the other side. That right now is in design. We're just submitting 25% right now, and that has a tentative date of 2026. We've had a tentative date of 2021 in the past, but everything slides. Um, but as we get closer with design, and the numbers, the uh, construction numbers get more accurate, you hopefully are able to sneak in at some point. The look of that is similar to one maybe in Fitchburg, and then I would like Conquer. Yeah, that's the one I'm picturing, and, and as you're coming down the bend in Lemonster, yeah, there's, there's one like Conquer right Conquer for the rotary now. You too. see like a basic truss yeah. style bridge, nothing too fancy or architectural, um, but yeah, it'll, it'll end up probably having a, a switchback for people to get up to it from the 140 of that area, uh, and then that steel single span across 140. So that's, I hope to see that in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just a couple of DPW needs, um, which I'm um, going to be submitting my budget um, at the end of the month. Whenever I submit a budget, I put in every single thing that I can possibly think of that I might need and let, at least so the mayor is aware of uh, general cost and it's also what our needs are. Uh, and one is the salt shed. When you drive down Naked Drive, you're going to look to your right. And our salt shed, I think, was built in the, it was the late 90s or might have been even early 90s and uh, it's it's actively it's, falling down yeah <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so what we're looking at doing is um, getting one of those I'm gonna call them a plastic bubble dome um, and trying to at least get a larger salt shed and looking right across the street we actually own that piece of property over there and maybe putting the salt shed over there it's gonna pull it away from we have a river that flows down it's gonna pull it away from the river and we're hoping to get a little bigger one so that we have a little more storage on hand um, for the event of an emergency that we at least have it on storage so. are there special permits that you have to get for a salt shed uh, I would guess that it's yeah <laughs> especially on the stormwater side mm -hmm. uh, just knowing that you're gonna get salt to run off from the property uh, so you have to go through the full DEP um, 
their notice of intent process, which comes with a full storm water design to help mm -hmm. stop those conveyances from getting to environmentally sensitive areas. Yeah. Uh, building permit wise, I, I don't think so if it's just the, yeah, it's, uh, it's less complicated on that end if it's one of those um, fabric structures. Yeah. But from the site perspective, it's uh, as stringent as if you were to build a new building or yeah. anything like that. Okay. Yeah. The other large need we have is a sign room. Um, maybe 12 years ago, 15 years ago, we started a sign department, building our own, making our own in-house signs, and it's just grown and grown. Now all our street signs we do, uh, we do event signs, I mean, we make signs for inside City Hall for the names of, you know, the departments and employees. Uh, it's it's grown huge, and uh, we're going to be looking at trying to get some kind of sign room for the, for the departments. Other than that, we got nothing going on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I just want to add one more project um, to add on to what Dane said, which was the Wayside Dam. This is the dam off of uh, 2A at Morse Electric. Mm -hmm. um, we recently received a grant from the state to fund the design of that, or 75% of the design of that. Uh, that's underway right now. Our hope is next fall, or if we need to wait another cycle, maybe maybe 18 months from now, we'll be able to um, ask for the same grant, which will cover 75% of the construction. So that'll be something that's uh, coming up. And so, yeah, I think that's it. Can you describe what's there now? Right now, it, it, I guess if you were to go there, it would look like three basic culverts that go from that pond on the Westminster side, uh, downstream heading towards Heritage Village. Mm -hmm. But there's actually an elevation difference, so it holds four or five feet of water back on that pond side. So it, it's, it's technically- and it holds it back from Morse Electric, right? Uh, their driveway. Yeah. So it, 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 to anybody, it would seem like it's a dam on private property. Early 60s, the Army Corps uh, came to Gardner to build the South Gardner Flood Control Project, which included Wright's Reservoir, the dam and dike, even a control gate in Westminster is technically ours to go between the upper and lower reservoir, Mahoney Broke, out on Traverse Street. So it's a whole project um, to hold back floodwaters from uh, that water system. And included in that was Wayside Pond Dam, which as of right now is entirely on private property. But as part of this grant, we're going to be seeking the appropriate property rights to maintain it uh, as we are on the hook for it. So there is a lot of history to that one. And disputes. A lot of history and disputes. Okay. Yeah, any, thank you for that. Any questions for uh, the points from the from uh, the director and uh, engineer? I remember the. The new water um, meters, are those the ones you're able to do from the vehicles and, yes. the, the, and then monthly bills now instead of, uh, or the possibility of monthly yeah, bills? Possibility yeah, possibility of monthly bills. That's something obviously we've discussed yeah. with the committee and the council as a whole, whether we want to go that way. Well, personally, I think if I was a homeowner, it's way more easy to budget $60 a month than you know, $180. Let alone if you have a leaky toilet, you find out one month instead yeah, of. Sure. These new meters, though, they do have a detector that if you're if there's a leak, if there's continual running, it lets, you, it lets us know and we can let the homeowner know. So Is that right? Yeah. Big for that, there's no meters you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. If it's stopped, or if it's dried, or tampered, it's tampered with, with well, or disconnected, <laughs> or bypassed. Or yeah. Right. So I mean, it's <laughs> it's it sounds like a lot of money to put into meters, but you would, as a meter gets older, it slows down and. Um, you actually end up losing revenue, so it might end up paying for itself over the course of a few years once we spend the money. So, at least that's theory. Then. That's yeah. theory. Um, well, that, that's good. Um, Kate Curtin is not with us, I take it. Katie. Katie. I, I do know that whole department. They came out with COVID, so oh, she might be one. That's all yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But they're dealing with that, but I'm unsure. What's that? Okay. Well, we'll hopefully have a report or an update from her at our next meeting. I do, uh, I, I, I do plan on meeting more regularly than I think has been done in the past, okay. only because, you know, there may not be items that are referred to the Safety uh, Service Committee by the Council, but there's updates uh, that, that you can provide regarding the status of, of the things that you've been talking about uh, that uh, we'd like to know so that we can answer questions from, to, from the public as well as from our 
from the other counselors, so um, uh, there's a lot to keep track of. So we plan on doing that. Anything else? Have anything else? No? Nothing else? Any, any comments, suggestions, or otherwise? Just, you guys are shorthanded with the snow and did a good job. <laughs> yeah, so, sure. Thank you. Shorthanded, all right. Yeah. Thank you, sir. For that, we'll go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting then. So moved. Second. All those in favor of aye. 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 Meeting stands adjourned.